uh, it's a, a preacher's book. I, I, you, you look at it, it's kind of like a preacher's book. You have, uh, we were doing the beginning, and there was one, uh, there was a, a one preaching from uh, chapter 2, and it, it lasted for a while. I think it was to chapter 7. And now we continue with uh, more pre, uh, another message right here. And this message uh, seems like it's, uh, it's going on. It's going to be in chapter uh, 10 also. And uh, we'll end at the end of chapter 2. So basically what you have is two preached messages right here. And just they kept going. So the, it's kind of because it kind of gets confused when you're doing it. I'll tell you why. Uh, you're looking at it, it's like everything's going down, it's, and it's hammering the same exact thing mostly every time. It's going back to those two indictments that what? You, uh, you've forsaken the, the, the Lord and his book, and you've brought in a different Bible, basically. You've brought in a different truth and uh, that, that holds no water, that's empty of water. And, uh, and we see that today. You know, you don't have to go far. Everybody here knows it's going on. Uh, it's been going on for years. It's annoying. It's definitely annoying. You know, I mean, once you've got the truth in your, once you have the truth in your heart of what book is God's book, you're, you're not happy with other books. You know? Uh, you see the, you know what it is, really? You see the deceit. They don't see it. See, they go, you're just right. splitting hairs. No, no, we're not splitting hairs. You start to look at it, it's not splitting hairs. No. It's, it's, all it's doing is we're trying to push out heresy. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to push in heresy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, that's why, and, and what really, what it gets mad is the more you're in church and the more uh, you're singing and knowing the songs, really you're listening to the song and saying, that's a beautiful one. They don't think like that. They think of what is to their emotions because that's all they're doing. There's no truth in that there's a little bit of course but it's more emotional and they heap up on emotions so uh, but in this chapter last chapter we were looking at um, uh, the uh, the dismay Jeremiah had some he had this he had this, this dismay and then of course uh, we looked at the second part of that uh, which was the Jews deceit the Jews had had a deceit and then from uh, uh, then we, we started to go further, and now we ended up at verse number, we start again at verse number 17 here. Uh, if you look at verse number 15, it says, uh, Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will feed them, even this people, with wormwood. That's a, that word comes in the Bible in Revelation. It's, it's here now. Uh, we know it says it's as bitter as wormwood. And uh, give give them water uh, of gall to drink. And uh, anybody knows that when Christ was on the cross, uh, what did they give him? They gave him gall. Yeah. They gave him vinegar with gall, which is a painkiller. And of course, he didn't uh, he didn't want that or need that. You know, he wanted right. to go through soberly. Okay. Uh, my thing is to you, and I uh, bring this up to you. I know there's a lot of people out there that uh, try and tell you to uh, look. If somebody is perishing. Do whatever you can to make them feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Regardless what they say. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry about all that stuff. Even the Lord in the book, what does he say? Give wine to those that are perishing. Yeah. Perishing. You know, if they're going to pass away, give them, give them something. That's right. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, why Why would anybody want to sit there and just just be in pain? They, 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 that's it. Yeah, I had to deal with that. <laughs> I had it too with my mom. Yeah. You know? Uh, okay, well... Um, he says, uh, worm, with wormwood and give them water of gall, verse 16, I, I will scatter them also among the heathen. And we know that happened uh, later on. Uh, it's today, if they're scattered. But I want to look back at that uh, thing, that wormwood. Okay, wormwood to drink. And let's go over to, uh, let's go a few places. We'll go look at it first. Okay, just to, because we didn't have much time last week. We didn't have enough time. Uh, go over to Deuteronomy 29. Deuteronomy 29. 29, 29. Yep, 29. Uh -huh. Deuteronomy 
twenty. And uh, in 29, look down, and we'll start in, look at 17. In, in verse 17, it's part of that parentheses, and we'll go to 16. For ye know how uh, we have dwelt in the land of Egypt, and how we came through the nations which ye passed by, and ye have seen their abominations and their idols, wood and stone, silver and gold, which were among them. Lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe, whose heart turneth away this day from, from the Lord our God to go and serve other gods of these nations. Now watch. Lest there should be among you a root that beareth what? Gall and wormwood to make you bitter. You know, unless there be something there that's going to do what? To make you uh, bitter, okay? Uh, go to um, Revelation chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8, and we know this one. Uh, and, you have a star. Yeah. and uh, look down, we're starting verse number uh, 10. After a third part of the creature of the sea were, uh, you know, in, in the sea and had life, they died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. Uh, verse 10, and the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of the waters. And the name of the star was called Wormwood. And, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood. They became bitter. Wormwood brings it as bitter. Uh, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. A lot of people think that's because they nuclear fallout and stuff like that. I don't know. Don't care. It doesn't matter to me. No. I, you know, I, I take it this way. I'm not going to be here. Let them deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you got to step back sometimes and turn around and go, that. I, you know, uh, I love this statement. I always go, let somebody else worry about it. I ain't got time. Well, but you got to think about it this way. When that was written, okay, time period, they didn't know about nuclear power or nothing. Oh, of course. Right. So what were they thinking then? Yeah. It's a star that fell out of heaven, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, you don't know. So, yeah, yeah, you don't know. And John is seeing these things and writing these things. Amen. Uh, yep. Let's see now. Uh, that that one of the things I get out of a lot of that, and I, I wrote down this little note uh, a bit, and what I said was, um, okay, one of the things the devil tries to do, and and we'll see it in. We see it in our lifetime. He goes after the spirit of your behavior, okay? And uh, and he what he wants to do is he loves bitterness. Whatever your spirit is, if God can change that, just get a little bitterness. Remember, he talks about the root of bitterness and what you have to do. You got to get in there and like dig it out. It, and, and if you don't, you know what happens? It festers. Right. You know, a little bitterness can start with just one statement, and, and the next thing you know, it just starts to spread. And just starts to get bigger and bigger, and then you fume on it. You ever fume on something all day? Oh, yeah. You ever fume on something all weekend? <laughs> yeah. God, it starts to build up and build up, and then when you explode, it's me and Larry. We're in the problem. <laughs> Come on, that's fun. It was. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> Look at Larry. He's like, would you not say that again? <laughs> He's a sober fellow. He sings a lot, though. He Amen. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. um, and, and, and if you looked at that next verse, it says, I will scatter them among the, the heathen, heathen, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, and I will send a sword after them till I have consumed them. Now, look, bring that today and, 
and, and you've got to understand something. I will scatter them amongst uh, the heathen. And, and i got to tell you something. The modern-day Christian today, he's totally conformed with the heathen. It's okay with it. Yeah. You know? I mean, my wife was talking about it. She has a friend of hers that is saved. And, um, and she was telling me, she said to me, well, I bet his family never heard about it. And I said, why? Because he was so, we, we actually, he came up to us and told us he was, he was saved at an event. And you'd have had to have said, what? Yeah. I mean, he came over from the others, you know, the words, dirty jokes and everything else and all the hoopla and whatever. Comes over, he came over and he, you know, with, I didn't care about everything like that. Just the talk and what he had, it was like trying to be secretive about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, it's kind of like that. And, uh, and then you, you realize something out of it. Somebody brought him the gospel, but he don't bring nobody the gospel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you got to remember that verse, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Yeah. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Jesus. I'm not ashamed of the, of the gospel right. of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation of those yeah. that believe. To those... Us. And, and yeah. Also the yeah. That's the Amen. Um, so, uh, but today, that's a lot of it. We're, the Christians are scattered amongst the, the heathen today. And, and so are the Jews. The Jews are scattered. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen they're all over the place. There's one thing about them that'll, that'll never change. They, they, don't, they don't enumerate in. Christians can enumerate in. They can go real fast because, you know, they're Gentiles and they're hanging just with, gen you know, they're old Gentiles and hang with Gentiles. And they can go right in. You know, we see them today. Uh, uh, let's face it, the Republican Party has, uh, has kind of used us. Yeah. They have used our values to take, uh, to take hold of them. And, uh, and, you know, they're using Republicans for the vote. They're using evangelicals, what they call us evangelicals. Uh, because we are, we're the, we do vote, and we are a big class of people uh, in this country. Why not go after them? Uh, uh, Donald Trump went right after the evangelicals because he knew one thing, that 90% of this country actually professes to be some type of Christian. Mm -hmm. I should say it like this. They believe it's, it's like Christendom, yes. like everybody that mentions Christ. That would be the Mormons and everything. But are we really with them? Of course not. Mm -hmm. Of course not. In fact, we think they're pretty silly, most of them, you know. But we have to realize something. We want to live a peaceful, a peaceable life here. While we're on earth, we, we strive to live a peaceable uh, life amongst all men, you know. I mean, who wants to? Uh, you want to go back out? At, your, at our age, do you want to go back out and be a farmer? No. From the beginning? Start tilling the land and start in your 60s and your 60s and 70s. Some of us will be in our 80s. And it's, uh, it, you know, uh, it's kind of like, can I just go down to the stand-in by? <laughs> you know? Can I buy from the Amish? Can I just go down to the Amish and buy? Yeah. Well, yeah. it's going to be tough when there ain't, when there's nothing in the supermarket, you know, if there's a famine. I'm going to have to move in with them. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. now we're going to look at another thing coming up, and we're going to be dealing with, um, we're going to be dealing with some stuff at the end. I, 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 uh. Uh, I would look at it as um, we're going to go from 17 to the end of the chapter. We're going to deal with the, you know, I, I, I had it written down as Jehovah's Delights. And then, of course, we're still in the, the decrees, the decrees of this stuff, of what he's speaking about. So let's go from 17. Uh, hopefully, you know, God will show us things. There's a few verses I had to actually, there's a few verses I had, two verses I actually had to go past. I'm hoping that I'll be, I get to see them now, you know, what they're about. But the Bible says in, seven, in verse number 17, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider ye and call for the morning women, that they may come and send for cunning women, that they may come, and, and let them make haste and take up a wailing for us, that our eyes may run down with tears, and our eyelids uh, gush out with waters. For a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. Uh, how are we spoiled? We are greatly confounded because we have forsaken the land, because our dwellings have cast us out. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O ye women, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth, and teach your daughters 
uh, wailing, and everyone her neighbor lamentation, for death is come up into our windows and is entered into our palaces to cut off the children from without and the young men from the streets. Speak thus, saith the Lord, even the carcasses of men shall fall as dung upon the open field and as the handful after the harvestmen, and none shall gather them. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man, the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorifieth glorifieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised, Egypt and Judah and Edom, and the children of Ammon, and Moab, and all that are in the utmost corners that dwell in the wilderness. For all these nations are uncircumcised, and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in the heart. Well, Father, bless this word tonight, Lord. Uh, let's learn from it, Father, and teach us. We need to hear from you like we did this morning, and we thank you that you came in and talked to us. Lord, Father, thank you for all you do. And Lord, again, give us some good fresh oil, something to pray about tonight. We thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I forgot to mention this morning, um, and, I, and I feel bad about it, but uh, Stephen, uh, Rochelle's boy, he, he had a, has a cyst on his spinal cord now. That kid's been through a lot, and, uh, um, and they're talking about taking it off. So we, uh, I think it's February 1st. So we're, 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 you know, we need to be praying for Stephen. You know, it's a pretty critical operation where he can be uh, paralyzed or even uh, pass. Oh, wow. How so. old is he? Uh, he's the youngest. What is he, about? Uh, 30-something. He about, uh, yeah, 30-something. Wow. 30 yeah, he's the youngest that I know. I guess he's the, maybe him or Sarah. I don't really know, but I assume he is. All right. Uh, so uh, verse number 17 and... Uh, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, so it's the Lord talking, consider ye, call for the mourning uh, women. You need something, you know what? I, I, I don't know if you've been in church. I've been in like, Greek churches. Greek churches, women that are widows, uh, that, they, they just keep coming to church. Do you know they wear the widow apparel for the rest of their lives? They do? Oh, yeah. What is that? Uh, they just wear the, you know, yeah, gray and black, and they just wear it every day to church. They go every day. Uh, we call them, we call them the weeping widows at the church. Uh, they come every day, and they go to every funeral. Uh, they're always crying. They're weeping with, you know, they're just, they're, they're mourners. you, you got to understand there's some, look, before we judge, before we judge, you've got to understand something. There are different types of people all over the world. Right. And one of these people is like Greek, Greek women, those old women, well, they only believe get married once, that's it. And uh, if one the uh, husband dies, that's it. And uh, you'll spend the rest of your life basically uh, as a widow. As a widow, and uh, uh, a lot of them, a lot of them go to, uh, at, like I, I said, uh, I never, uh, my, my dad, my dad used to always say, you know, um, when, when, he would, when he dies, uh, tell all the families stand on the corner and put all the weeping widows in the uh, in the limousines and let them go. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't really get everybody. He used to say, "Good joke," but it didn't happen. But I could see him thinking that, you know. And uh, you go down to the church and they'd be there. And he's saying, he says, "You need these people." Look, well, look, this is God speaking. Uh -huh. And he says, "Call for them. You need these people, okay?" And, and they may come and send the cunning and send the cunning woman that they. Uh, that they may come and, and let them make haste and take up what? Wailing for us. Uh, you don't think this happened? Go, let's, I'll show you a place. Go over, to, uh, go over to Luke 23. Luke 
Luke 23 and uh, look down at uh, verse number 27. During the during towards the crucifixion, coming to the area of Golgotha, Simon's got Simon's carrying the cross. And then it says, And there followed him a great company of people. And of what? Women. Women. Which also bewailed and did what? Lamented him. But Jesus turning unto them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, uh, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for what? And for your children. And for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which uh, they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs of, of them that never, that never bear, and the paps which uh, never gave, gave suck. I mean, during the tribulation, it's going to be hard to get things, hard to do things. It's going to be a tough time. You know, he's, what he's saying is it's going to be hard for you if you have a baby. I mean, women aren't going to be looked at. The, the Antichrist has no desire for women. No desire to put them up. Okay, uh, you can see it today. I mean, in this world that's moving and moving more towards the end, it's funny that the women, they're putting the women in leadership roles, but it's also a kind of odd that uh, they, they, they're doing away with like women's sports and treating them like that. And then soon when the Antichrist comes in, these women that are all in charge, they'll be done away with. They'll be all done away with. He has no desire uh, for them. Okay, and, um, and, and but Jesus, he turned around and he said, well, you need, you need these. You need people to wail. Uh, call the women up. That they, these women that, that did wail. Jesus turns around and look what he says. He says, he turns around and he says to them, daughters of Jerusalem, you need to wail, you need to mourn, you need to lament. But you need to lament for who? Yourselves. You're the guys going to go through this. Uh, after I'm done this, guess what? It's going to be bad for you. It's going to be bad for you. He understood some of those things. And call for the mourning women that need to be wailing for us that our eyes may run down. You know, uh, you need to look at yourself. We need to look at ourselves. And we know what else? We need to wail for ourselves, for what's coming. Now, I understand uh, we say, well, we're getting out of here. Yeah, but i got to tell you something, man. There are going to be some people behind. I don't really want them left behind, but they're still going to be left behind. And you know something? I feel bad for them because they're, they, they, they don't realize what's coming. They just don't realize what's coming. Uh, I mean, Nebuchadnezzar's coming down the way, and now, and now it's going to be the second army coming down the way. And, and you know, uh, here they are. They don't, they, they're sitting there thinking it's like some kind of fairy tale when we talk. And, and it's, gotten, it's gotten to the point they don't believe the book. They don't believe this. They've been told this for years. Hey, I don't know how many bumper stickers I've seen. Uh, the Lord's coming back, and boys, he pissed. And people see they look at it and they, they look at you got to understand they see Jesus and they only see that one what they've been shown what's that they've been shown the anemic hippie that goes around with flowers going love 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 and that's all they see is God is love and the type of love they're talking about is perverse yes it's a perverse love it's not the love you learn. You know, uh, think about this, people. If you were to watch TV and you were to watch any type of dramas, do you know what, you know what love is? It's sex. We're going to make what? Love. Uh, i got to tell you something. It has nothing to do with it. Right. Nothing to do with that whatsoever. And then they tell you, we're going to make, what are you going to do? Love this guy tonight. Love this guy tomorrow. Love another guy next week. Love another. That's not love. That's not love at all. And that's where we, it's total confusion. Okay, uh, verse number uh, 19, for a voice of wailing is heard, where? Zion. Out of Zion. There should be joy coming out of Zion. What are we, why is wailing coming out? He says, how are we spoiled? Notice that exclamation, how are we spoiled? We are greatly, what, confounded. It shouldn't be that way. Why? Because we, we have forsaken the land. That land that has the temple down there. We've forsaken that. that. That land that has the scriptures in it, the oracles of God, are to the Jews. They're sitting at the temples. They're sitting at the synagogues. They're being read there. And we've forsaken our land. You know, uh, God said about their land, what's that where my eyes are upon it? He said, that land. 
And they've forsaken that land. Why is that? Because our dwellings have cast us out. God's in that land. Go to Leviticus 25. Leviticus 25, and uh, starting right in the beginning. And the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune uh, thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shalt be a Sabbath of rest unto the land. A Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyards. That which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest thou shalt not reap, neither gather the grapes of thy, of thy vine undressed. For it is a year of rest unto the land. And the Sabbath of the land shall be meat for you, for, uh, for thee and for thy servant and for thy maid, and for thy hired servant and for thy stranger that sojourneth with thee. And for thy cattle and for the beasts that are in thy land shall all the increase thereof be uh, meat. And God gives them a, a, a good amount of orders here uh, about what? You've forsaken that land. You see all that stuff he's talking about, that was for that land. Uh, the, the hard part you're going to find is when you read this Bible, you're going to find out that from the book of Judges, all the way through uh, to the book of 2 Kings and the last exact verse, uh, no, well, just before it, you, you know what they never did? They never did a sabbatical year. No one ever, lit. what you've got to realize is that means that they, they never listened to the commandments of the Lord. Oh, wow. Mm. And they got worse and worse. And you know, bad part is God still was still blessing them at times. And yet they weren't even obedient. They never did a Sabbath. You know they never did because we were reading in Judges about Dan. And that was in the very beginning how the Danites came down and they didn't. They just never did. They never cared about it. And, and, and that's the land and that's what he's trying to say. You've forsaken the land. What did Jeremiah even say? Uh, you, you didn't do any Sabbaths for all those years. 490 years of these kings and you, you couldn't even do one Sabbath? Uh, so what does he say to him? He says, guess what? Uh, you're gonna you're gonna get kicked out for how long? Well, how many Sabbaths are there in 490 years? 70. They got booted out for 70 years. Wow. And, and you know something? Actually, if you really think about it, and you go back, do you realize how how merciful the Lord was for them? Because if you start to count how many of the 70 years, He starts at the first siege. There was three. He didn't start when Zedekiah and they destroyed the temple. He started at the first siege. You start counting, and you're like, oh man, isn't that something? Amen. Something like that. Okay, look at, uh, he says, you need wailing. Why? Because you've, you've forsaken the land because our dwellings have cast us out. Verse 20, yet, yet, hear the word of the Lord. Even so, hear the word of the Lord. Even, hey, look, you better listen, O ye women, and let your ears receive the word of his mouth and teach <laughs> your daughters what? Wailing. And everyone her neighbor lamentation. You better realize something. There's judgment coming. And if there's a judgment coming, you need to go somewhere. You know where you need to go? You need to go to the book. You need to hear the word of God. That's what he's trying to tell them. This is what you need. Okay? You need to go to the book. And then you'll get understanding. Why is that? For death has come up into our windows and is entered into our palaces to cut off the children from without and the young men from the streets. If we don't, you know, uh, if we don't do something, if we don't do something, guess what's going to happen? Our families are going to start suffering. That's what he's talking. He says, look, if, if we don't do something, that things are going to start happening in our family. The families are going to start suffering. Hey, look, do you realize that uh, if, if you ain't got a preacher who's going to preach about uh, sin and he's going to preach about putting families back together, he's going to preach about getting rid of junk out of your life, do you, do you realize your family's going to suffer? 
Your family's going to suffer. I, I mean, you, you know, you got to get into the truth of things. He says, uh, he said, uh, the young men, the young men from off the streets. Well, well, let me say say something to you. Uh, what does the Bible say about the streets? Where's wisdom come come from? It cries in the streets. And we kind of think that that's street preachers, but I, you know, no. Uh, you've said it so many times. Uh, uh, you know, where'd you get your education, Larry? That's right. Most of us got our education. Uh, we're not the rich set right here. Most of us got, got our education from uh, pain and errors from where? The street. street the street. That's what they call it, street smarts. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and, and today you need some street smarts just to, just to get through life. You've got to have some street smarts. You know, you've got to be able to look at somebody. People say, don't judge people. But let me tell you something. If you don't, you'll be getting into some big messes. He says the spiritual man, he does what? He judgeth what? All things that's all things spiritual. You should be judging all that. Uh, even when uh, anybody anybody gets up and they want to preach or something like that, you got to look at the stuff they talk about. You know? You got to look at the scriptures. You got to look at it. Why? Well, you're playing with your mind. You're playing with the mind. He says uh, He says uh, verse number 21 for death is come. For death is come, your families are going to suffer. To cut off the children, to cut them off, and, and the young men, to, to, to cut them off, the streets, and, but wisdom is on the streets. Speak, thus saith the Lord. Speak, thus saith the Lord. Even the carcasses of men shall fall as dung upon the open field. And as the handful after the harvestmen, and none shall gather uh, them. That uh, I actually sat there today, and I sat on that verse, and sat on that verse, and sat on that verse. And then just before, about what, about ten minutes before I started closing up and everything, all of a sudden it came to me. <laughs> That's something like that. Uh, but look at that part where it says, as the handful after the harvestmen. Okay? Uh, the harvestmen, what do you say? The, they pick up the handful. But you know what they're saying when they get it? I got mine. The harvestman's thinking, I got all, I got what I need. Okay? And because uh, he says, speak, thus saith the Lord. Even the carcasses of men shall fall as dung upon the open field. Now watch. And as, a, as the handful after the harvestman. He only has that in. There's, uh, I got mine, but what they're not thinking about is other people are dying. I got mine. We see that today. I'm taking care of what I got, but everybody else is perishing. That's the church today. I got mine. I don't worry about you. Uh, they're even told that in church today. Look, uh, there's a difference between mind your own business, uh, stay in your own lane, and uh, and then, uh, but there's people perishing out there. That has nothing to do with substance. It has everything to do with you. Okay. Now, now, look, I know some of us, we can't get out. They can't do all these things. We're getting older and everything else. But there is what we call prayer. I, I couldn't be expecting a, you can't be expecting a blind man to go knocking doors. I got saved. Okay, let's go knock doors. Where's the door? You understand what I'm saying? What can he do? Well, he can pray. He can pray. He can do what he can. That's the thing you got to understand. God's not looking for you to do all these amazing things. He's looking at you to do what? You can. Why well, can't do that? That's obvious. We'll do what you can do. What can you do? Well, I can pray. Well, we need somebody like that. We need prayers. Real big. He, he, verse number uh, 23 now. In verse number 23, we're going to be talking about uh, the, the delights. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise men glory in his wisdom, neither let the uh, mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his uh, riches. I got to I, I, I gotta look at that and I say right off the bat, where are all these guys? Where's all the rich men? Remember Paul asked that question? Where's the rich? You, you ever notice they're not, they're not the ones in it. Where's all these wise guys? Hey, where's Stephen Hawking every Sunday? I mean, he's so smart. He, he, he's so smart and he's so stupid. You know, I, I, I was reading an article he wrote. And uh, in the article he says that... Um, he doesn't believe in God, but, but what he says is 
Something, the laws of physics or the, or the natural laws had to exist before the Big Bang. Oh, what are you really saying? That there's a God and you just named him something else called the laws of nature? <clears throat> you see how prideful a man like that is? Is he still alive? No. Oh. Einstein was the same way. No, he's dead. Einstein, and Einstein was the same way. Yeah, he, well, Einstein on his death. Actually, Einstein believed in a monotheist. <coughs> he was a monotheistic person who believed in God. His only problem is he didn't know him and he didn't believe in Christ right. like that. And then on his deathbed, he started. People started witnessing to him. Why not? People came around and and brought him the gospel. You know what the man said? He said he, first. He said, "If you could, if you could prove it to me, I would believe." People gave it to him and gave it to him. Did mathematical probability and everything down the line. And in the end, he said, "I just can't believe." So it wasn't about proof. It still goes back to one thing. God says it. What's that? Without faith, it's impossible. Right. To please him. Yeah. You're going to have to take that step of faith. Look, it's just like this book, okay? There's a step of faith that you have to take. Because uh, like somebody like me, I believe that uh, it, this, this book came from God. Amen. Amen. Every good gift is what? From above. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I actually believe is not that... This thing had manuscripts and came along. I believe that that, all those manuscripts, that's man impeding what God is trying to do. God wanted to just deliver it to us, and we've messed it up for years. So God had to use us in a way uh, that we wouldn't even realize it, but we think we're in charge, but we're not. And he brought it to us and got this book to us. And, and that's why there's so many things in here that we keep finding and finding and we're like unbelievable. God says if you'll take that part, if you'll take that part of faith and you'll just believe that book and, and you won't take it as the manuscripts and it came from the right things which you can't prove. You cannot prove those things. God wants it by faith. And if you'll do it by faith, you know what he does? He opens it up. He starts to open up the numbers. He starts to open up things. I mean, we're finding things in it all the time that we say, that, where did that come from? Like Psalm chapter, Psalm, excuse me, Psalm 16. How many verses? 11. 16, 11. And in those 11 verses, you'll look at the last verse, and it says what? That the, the, showing you the pathway. What's that in this book? It's just so beautiful to see these things. And then you see the first two words, and then the last two words, preserve me forever. <laughs> preserve me forever. The last words, forever. The first two words, preserve me. That's 1611. Isn't that something? And, and people say, well, that's just a coinky thing. Mm -hmm. Pretty good coinky thing, huh? Yeah. I don't think it's anything's a coincidence in this book. Mm -hmm. God set it all up. Who could have written it? Knowing those things, putting those things in. Nobody could have written it with putting those in there. The middle verses of Bible. The 16, uh, the 16, 111th verse. Oh, man, things like that. And it keeps coming out, keeps coming out, and keeps coming out. Amen. He says, he says here, he says, uh, uh, verse number 23. Where are these? Thus saith. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise men glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man uh, gl yeah, glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. And even Paul, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26, what did he say? Where are all these people? Where are these people? Okay? Uh, you know, you got to understand something. Even if you put all these best men together, they still fall short of the glory of God. All of them together still fall short of the glory of God. What we realize is men are frail. Natural man is totally frail. Uh, if, they, uh, if they glory in their uh, wisdom and, and riches, they're just a bunch of fools. Because God said the wisdom of this world is just foolishness. Okay? Um, go to uh, Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah 5. This is the chapter where they call good evil and evil good. Which we are living in today. Yeah. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 5. 
and let's look down at verse, we'll start in verse number 13. Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honor and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Now we see the spiritual application there, don't we? Uh -huh. Dried up with thirst. What are they thirsting for? Word of God. Mm -hmm. right. Now, now, verse 14. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. And their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth, rejoiceth shall do what? Descend, Descend right into it. Yeah. I, I, look, you know. think you're rich, you think you're this, I don't care who it is. You better have the right Lord, it better be Jesus Christ, and you better submit it to him. And you better have changed your heart over to him. It don't matter. You're going to find how hard it is. Remember Christ said to that rich man? And people think, that ain't no plan of salvation. That was to break his heart. What's that? Go sell everything you got. Your stuff is keeping you because your mind is set on stuff. Mm -hmm. We see that. You lack something. What's that? you got a heart problem yeah. right there. I can't stand when guys keep saying that's like some, see, that's, that shows you that men are saved in the Old Testament. I, I've been witnessing the people for years, and I've had all kinds of guys come up to me, and I've said, hey, you think you're a good person? And they say, what? I've never murdered anybody. No. Uh, and you got to think of that's the best you got. You kept one commandment your whole life. It's the same thing as the rich young ruler. What did he say? I've kept those all my youth. People don't. Look, you've been witnessing on those things, and people have been saying that. Then you get in the Bible, and you do like a mind dump <laughs> on well, those things. Not necessarily so on the murdered part. They hate somebody. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Amen. I, you know what? But I'll give them that. <laughs> Amen. But that's, that's a look at what they are, the, 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 the wise and all that. Go to 1 Peter uh, chapter 1. First Peter chapter one. One of my favorite uh, verses here. Uh, I know twenty three is is definitely about my famous my, my my favorite verse. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Uh, why is this? Uh, for all flesh is as grass. And isn't that true? It's just like grass. Why? Uh, and all the glory of man as a flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. You're here today, and everything they do, all that glory and all that stuff just goes away in time. Just goes and blows away. Uh, I, I, I remember reading in uh, Ecclesiastes when God turned around and he said, uh, he said, you don't even make a dent in this world. Do you know that all our famous people, uh, all our famous, that we make big legends about and everything else, you know most of that stuff's a lie? Yeah. They didn't do any of that stuff. I mean, I remember as a kid, I actually thought George Washington do, did uh, not tell a lie when he cut down the cherry tree. <laughs> and all I cared about was that I went to McDonald's and I got a cherry pie. <laughs> Every year on Washington's birthday. That's what I cared about. Amen. Yep, he didn't tell a lie. Give me that cherry pie. Amen. <laughs> so, but, uh, but that's to show you, men, I don't care. It's the best they got. As the best they got. The best they can come up with. You know, it's nothing. You know, I, I always thought about this. If we could get every Christian on the planet, I'm talking about every Bible believer, and put them in a stadium or something like that. We'd probably need a lot more. Uh, but if we got them all in a stadium and everybody said, well, what we're going to do is we're going to extract all the Bible that you know. We may come up with about 5% of this book. And you know what? 95% we still don't know. And we're not going to know until about almost after the millennium. Well, we may get the whole thing. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think so. And the reason why is because, man, it's just all and all. And even with a thousand IQ, I don't know if we'll be able to get it. Mm -hmm. Adam didn't get it. He still fell. Where's the wise men? Where are all these people? You know, uh, there, the no, there, there's no wisdom of man that will be glorified. There's no way it needs to be. 
Uh, God, God hardly calls, uh, he'll hardly call, uh, uh, you know, these such men that say they're wise and these, when's the last time you ever heard of, uh, a, a, like, a baseball player, famous baseball player drops everything and turns around and says, that's it, I'm going to serve God. I only know one that I've ever met or have actually read about, and that was Billy Sunday. Billy Sunday was a baseball player, and uh, he was a drunk and everything else. And one day he, he, got a, he got a track or from a girl. They always say it was a little girl or something like that. And then he was uh, coming, down, uh, coming down the road uh, in Chicago and uh, heard a street preacher. And then next thing you know, he walked into uh, Pacific Garden Mission where he got saved. And, and then later on, what did he do? He left baseball. He turned around, just left baseball, and went and became an evangelist. And he led over 600,000 people to Christ, they yeah. say. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, those are the people. The Bible actually warns against the, uh, these people all the time. It warns against them. Isn't something? You know what the problem is? We glory in their first birth and never think about their second birth. How many people think, uh, oh, how great Reggie White is? Uh, he brought uh, he he this all this prayer that's happening in the NFL. Uh, it started about with uh, Reggie White when he was going around from the Eagles and then went to the Green Bay Packers. They used to call him the Minister of Defense because he was a defensive lineman. And then when he ended his career, uh, the next thing he does is he turns around and says, "Well, I don't want to evangelize anymore. I'm going over. I'm going over this place and I'm going to learn Hebrew." And then he died. God don't need him to, to learn Hebrew. He needed him to evangelize in that locker room. You know, he could have been a correspondent that just goes in the locker room. You don't think they would have let him in? They sure would have. That's what he was due to, there to do. Uh, he thinks it's to play football. You know, God don't need nobody to play football. But he'll use it to get them in the room to talk about Christ. Uh, we're not going to glory in their riches. Verse 24. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth God. There you go. You want to glory in something? He's telling you no God. What, what do you, what do you, I'm an architect. I'm a this, I'm a that. Who cares? What about God? That's the only thing that has done is provide income to keep you alive and keep you going. Uh, God says, I don't need that stuff. I want somebody that understands me, understandeth and knoweth me that I am the Lord. Go to Jeremiah chapter 4. Jeremiah chapter 4. If thou, if thou will return, O Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me. And if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my sight, then shalt thou not be removed. And thou shalt swear. What? The Lord liveth. That's when you swear. Look, they're, they're yelling at their little carnal things going around yelling, Look, I just got blessed. Got a new card. Yeah, guess what? The Lord liveth. He got me a new car. The Lord liveth. Next thing you know, the car breaks down and it stopped running anymore. The devil made that one. Devil got me. That old wily devil. Can't say things like this. Ah, I bought a car. I want it. It broke down. Oh, well. It would be more reasonable, wouldn't it? Yeah. You ever notice that everybody's blessed by carnal things? You never hear somebody get up and give a testimony, look, I've been praying for, for this, and the Lord gave me a better prayer life. Well, how did he do that? Well, it was pretty easy. He took away all my family. Now, wouldn't that have been something? I asked for a better prayer life. I did. I asked for a better prayer life once, and I meant it, and I begged God, and I got it. I got to tell you something. God emptied this place out, and me and Deanna were really down on our knees. You get a better prayer life in distress. <laughs> but Larry came in after that. Better, better. Yeah. What's that laugh? I just say, better be careful what you wish. You know what? That ain't going to hurt, though. I mean, no. 
really, we do need better prayer lives. But whatever God, think about it. God says that we, we have a problem with asking God for things, but we don't like how he brings it about. <laughs> Amen. No spiritual things. Uh, look, uh, Larry, you you wanted to learn the Bible much, much more. You wanted to get into a church that had a, had a book. How, how long did it take you? Oh, boy, many years. Sure shaped you up, didn't it? Yeah. Got you, got you happy that you're in a, you're, you're reading the book now, being preached from the book, you know. And that's the, that's the wait, that's the time. What's that? Sure gave you a better prayer life. <laughs> sure gave you a better faith once you were there. It does that, amen. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, I want them to understand that I am the Lord and that they know me. Go to uh, Exodus chapter six. Exodus, that's when God gives his plan. I'm going to do this. This is when he gives his plan of uh, those cups that are at the Passover. They come from, uh, I think, 6. Yeah, 6-6. Six, six. And that's where we're going to be. The Bible says, Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of Egypt, and I will rid you out of their bondage and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments and, and I will take you to me for a people and I will be to you a God and ye shall know that you're going to know that I am the Lord your God which bringeth you out from under the burdens of, of the Egyptians and I will bring you into a, a, the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, and I will give it you for a heritage. I am the Lord. And, and we know that they're the four cups. They're actually the four cups that are at the Passover. And Jesus, when he says this cup, he says this cup is the New Testament. It's the, it written in my blood, you know, the cup. And he turns around, that's the cup of redemption. It's the third cup. That's the one Jesus is pointing to. And that fourth cup, we're not going to drink that until we get in the kingdom. What are the first two cups? The sanctific cup of sanctification. He just said, you're going to be my people. I'm going to take you out. And then the next, the second cup is the cup of deliverance. Where he turns around, he says, I'm going to deliver you out of here. And then he says, I'm going to redeem you, which is what Jesus is saying. Now that's the one we're on right now. And then when we get into the kingdom and he sits on the throne of David, you know what he says? We're going to be rejoicing. The cup of rejoicing. Amen. Amen. That's what the Passover is actually about. It's four cups and, a, and the bread. Amen. So, I, I, just so you know, I only learned that this. So the cup of rejoicing is the, the drink we'll have of Jesus. Yes. Yes. We're not on that cup yet. We haven't gotten the inheritance. Because he says we'll drink. Uh, in, in the kingdom. In the kingdom. In the kingdom. Beautiful part. I've never seen it before until we were going through and uh, somebody had mentioned, where, where did they come from? We had did the Passover with some uh, people from Israel, and that they did it. They we we sipped it four times. I had to drink it four times. I, I kept saying, "Why are we filling the cup up each time?" I didn't understand it. And then I, when I was doing the chapter, I looked that up. Why are we four? Why four times? And then it said in there, there was four cups on the table. Now it made sense when he said this cup. It made sense to me. Amen. Well. Uh, he said. He said these things. Go to. Uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna go to two more place. Uh, two more places here. Uh, let's go over to Deuteronomy chapter thirty-three. Deuteronomy thirty-three. After Deuteronomy thirty-three, we'll be going to Psalm thirty-four. Deuteronomy thirty-three. Wow, I just turned to it. It's like Larry with his songbook. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy thirty. We'll be in the last verses, 26. Verse 26, there is none like unto the God of Jeshurun. Uh, that's when they're run, on the run, Jeshurun. Who rideth upon the heaven in, the, uh, in thy help, and in his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Amen. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, Destroy them. 
Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also, his heaven shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency. And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. Don't you think it's good to know the Lord when you read something like that? Imagine what what God, when God looks down or sees how people are treating his church and sees it, you've got to realize when you see those people that treat the church like that and you start to go past their history, how'd they do? How'd Germany do after they did that? How they doing today? All messed up, aren't they? You want to mess with that? You want to mess with God's people physically? You'll, me you'll get all messed up. You mess with them. Go to uh, Psalm 34. Psalm 34. Man, their land is left desolate unto them. Don't mess with them. Psalm 34. Look at verse number... Look down at verse... We're going to start verse number 8. In verse number uh, 8, with just regular verses, not uh, a big section. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him, isn't that true? Amen. Look down at verse number 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. And then look at the uh, last part. And saveth such as be of a contrite or a remorseful spirit. You see? Remember, that's the same thing David said, didn't he, in 51. Look at verse 22 now. Go down to the end. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants. Amen. And none of them that trust in him shall be what? Desolate. desolate. None that believe in him be desolate. Hey, man, there's people out there. They, they get saved. You know what? They go back into the world. They don't even know if they're saved anymore. They're not looking for the rapture. When it comes, you know what? They're going to go up anyway. I mean, it makes you think of, a, a, you know, you see a one of, like, a lady, uh, you see her with the kid. You never go in a supermarket, you see the kid, and he's screaming and yelling, and the mom's just pulling the kid. <laughs> he's fighting the whole time, being rebellious. Uh, yeah, that's going to be most Christians at the rapture. Hmm. Come on, come on. Because <laughs> they want to stay here. <laughs> There's so much into the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I remember they used to say, I don't like, I'm a Christian, I don't like church, don't go to heaven. But, well, that's where the church is. <laughs> and guess what you're going to be doing up there? You don't want to be in the family of God. <laughs> yeah. when, when the Lord comes out, in chapter 4, when, when all of a sudden the Lord comes out, you know, what is he going to do? He's going to preach. You don't like church, you ain't going to like heaven. You don't like church, you ain't going like, to like the millennium. If you don't like church, you ain't going to like eternity. Why? He's based it all around on spiritual things like that. Amen. Amen. Uh, now, uh, go back and let's look at the last two verses. And, and in 25 and 26, it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised. You know, Jews didn't believe that. They believed it was going to be different. They believed they were the good, and that's it. Now God turns around right in Jeremiah when he's standing in front of the remnant that is all circumcised, and he says what? You see, you guys, you're going, to be, you're going to be punished with those people over there. You know the ones you've been making fun of? You know the ones you've been putting down, those heathens out there? Guess what? We're going to lump you in right with them. He's going to, he's going to judge them. You're going to be judged right with them. Verse 26, Egypt and Judah and Edom and the children of Ammon and Moab and all that are in the utmost corners that dwell in the wilderness. They're all out there wandering, even them. For all these nations are what? Uncircumcised. And all the house of Israel are uncircumcised where? Right in their heart. All saved people are circumcised. Amen. We have the circumcision done without? That's what God wants here. And he says, look, because you're my people. 
You're my people. But you got to realize something. Just like the church today and the remnant, you ain't acting like it. You ain't acting. You ain't got a heart for me. You ain't got a mind for me. You know, uh, when you sing, you're going through the numbers. We see that now. We're going, a lot of people just going through the numbers. You know, church is just a religion today. Whatever happened to the heart? There used to be a heart in the church. You know, uh, uh, we don't see it as much in here physically. Physically. I go over to Raw C, I get to see it. They got this old building, man. And, and you just look down in that, at that building, and you just see history in the making right in front of you. And you see when it was built, and, and then you see things that have probably gone through. And you, you know, we look at it and we go, you know something? I wonder if Charles Finney had anything to do with anything around here. Now it's not about Charles Finney, but he did bring the gospel up here and the effects of it. The effects came into Oxbow, and you still see it. There's still a lot of people, and just in our little town of Oxbow, there's some good amount of people that are saved in the town. They're messed up, but they're saved. You know? And we get to see it once in a while. You know? Uh, it, it's just, it, it's, you know, uh, here, uh, here we are, my wife and I, we live on the corner, we, we have scripture signs up, and, and you know what? Uh, people know these things. And they talk, well, you're, you're the preacher. They tell that to me, you're the preacher, or they'll say, you're the pastor. Uh, yeah, we know, I know you. Uh, they don't know me by who I am, but they know where I live. When we, when we are at the gym or something like that, and uh, somebody, uh, uh, somebody will say, uh, they know, you know you're a pastor or something like that. Where do you live? I live down in Oxbow. Oh, you live on the corner. Yeah, they told us a, pa a, a preacher or a pastor lives there. Isn't that something? They know who we are. And, and what God's looking at this, he's, you know, he's dealing with the remnant, but you realize he slips in there something. What's that? He tells you his delights. What's that? I want you to know me. I want you to know me. H how do you know God? Read his book. <laughs> so what are you guys doing? I'm reading his book. <laughs> you want to know him? Read his book. It's real easy. It's real easy. All right, let's pray. Uh, get ready for the next time because when we're on chapter 10, I don't want y'all crying at me. Amen. I ain't trying to take away your, your things. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank thee. We love you, Lord. Thank you for the, the peace we have, Lord Father. Uh, thank you, Lord, for this morning and, and, and all the people that were here, Lord Father, and the good spirit we had, Lord God. We're, we're having some fun times in church, even in the morning, Lord. Even, the, even though we're getting convicted, Lord, we're still uh, learning things and, and we're having a good time learning. Lord, let us get closer to you as a church. And, Lord, we're just waiting for you like a bus stop saying, come on, Lord, come back. Yeah. We want to see you. Thank you for all you do. You really have been good to us and providing for us. Please bless Stephen this week, Lord Father, and, and the decisions that need to be made and give him wisdom, Lord Father. We thank you again, Lord, and, and also for Mary. She goes through a lot during the week three times. Lord, and we just pray, Lord God, that you keep her at ease with it. Lord God, get her closer to you. That's what she really needs. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. Just ask you, Lord, to bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Man, we didn't have anybody on tonight.